Hello again. As part of our online education success series, in this episode of Explorations Learning Network, we'll be covering what you need to know about e-learning platforms. Hi, I'm Avi Anderson, and this is the Explorations Learning Network. platform. Basically, a platform is the hardware, the operating system, and the software you need in order to accomplish a task on a computer. According to the experts at the University of Washington eScience Institute, if you're a researcher for NASA, the Department of Energy, or the National Science Foundation, and you need to crunch a bunch of data, you'll need access to a supercomputer for data analysis, ensemble computing, and data visualization. <laughs> oh, that's much more interesting in the matrix. Oh, look, girl in red dress. But if you're not a research geek, just your everyday student, you'll need a normal computer that can run standard software and an operating system. That's right. These big supercomputers won't run your basic word processing program. Are you thinking about taking a class online? Well, you're going to need an internet connection, hardware, software, and a current operating system. Getting online requires access to the internet, which is rendered through an internet service provider. We'll go over the details in a later episode. But to get online, you've got two options. Option one, you can pay an internet service provider for your own private access account. Or option two, you can access the internet at free Wi-Fi hotspots. If you're a student at a college or university, you may have free internet access. Even some cool parts of your own city probably provide free Wi-Fi. And even at your local library, you can even get free Wi-Fi at local businesses, especially coffee shops and restaurants. This is the best part about getting an online education. You can be at your favorite place, chill out with a cup of joe, and be in class all at the same time. The most common computer platform is called the desktop. They're called desktops because, let's face it, unless you're a bodybuilder, these things are hardly portable. There are many different brands available. They generally fall into about two categories, Windows-based machines and Macs. Both work really well for online learning. Desktop computers are powerful, have space for lots of memory, and can either run one big screen or multiple screens. Having two monitors is a real advantage to online learning because you may need to research information from one website and at the same time be using that information to create a presentation or write an essay. Portability is becoming even less of a problem because public places such as your school, the library, or even your office have computers that you can use for your online classes. But some people desire even more portability. Online applications such as Dropbox even allow you to store and share your files across the internet. You can also carry your work on a portable media device such as a thumb drive or flash drive. Despite all of these advantages, like I said, desktops are not very portable. <laughs> if you want to take your computer with you, you're going to need a laptop or a notebook. Again, these machines come in Windows or Mac, and the best thing about a laptop is that they're portable. However, they're usually more expensive than desktops, and you're probably going to have to spend a little bit of extra cash on storage space. And although you can add an extra monitor, especially when you use these at home, that kind of defeats the purpose of having a portable machine. If you're looking for true portability, you might want to invest in a tablet or smartphone. These devices, such as the iPad and the Galaxy Note, are extremely portable and can easily access the internet. However, be aware that because of a squabble between Apple and Adobe, flash-based players won't work on 
iPads and iPhones, but we'll work on Android phones and non-Apple tablets. If you want to use one of these devices, check with the producer of your online training to see if you can use this device for your online course. There are a few other platforms for online learning that are worth mentioning. One of the original platforms for e-learning is satellite television. In fact, even before satellite TV, children were learning from popular shows such as Romper Room and Sesame Street. Doctors, nurses, and other healthcare professionals throughout the United States learn about medicine and healthcare through the telemed system. Thanks to the internet, distance learning is now available through on-demand video with services like YouTube, Vimeo, and TeacherTube. You can also take online classes through portable media devices such as CD-ROMs, DVDs, Blu-rays, and compact flash drives. We're not going to spend a lot of time on the operating system. Just remember that the operating system is what allows you to interact with your hardware. There are many operating systems. The most common include Linux, Windows, Android, and the Apple iOS. You need a browser such as Google Chrome, Internet Explorer, Firefox, Safari, or Opera. Most online classes require you to use an internet browser. Don't worry about the cost. They're all free. You're also going to need an office suite. No, silly. An office suite is a group of software that allows you to write a paper, make presentations, and crunch data. You can buy an office suite, or you can use online versions for free. We'll talk more about this in a later episode. Finally, you're going to need an e-learning portal. Some of the more popular e-learning portals are Blackboard, Moodle, and Coursera. The portal is designed by an e-learning provider and it's your way to access your online course. Okay, let's review. Your e-learning platform is made up of the following. An internet connection, hardware, software, which includes an operating system and an office suite, and an e-learning portal. Thanks for joining me today on our explorations of e-learning platforms. See you again on our next e-venture. The Explorations Learning Network is a production of Clark College and is sponsored through generous donations and the support of students and faculty. Mark Gaither is our producer and director, and this episode was sponsored through a Department of Labor grant administered by the Washington State Workforce Training and Education Coordinating Board. The Workforce Training and Education Coordinating Board is a partnership of labor, business, and government dedicated to helping Washington residents obtain and succeed in family wage jobs while meeting employers' needs for skilled workers. I'm Aviance Anderson for the Explorations Learning Network, advancing learning for the information age.